Hello and welcome to to the final bell. It is great to have you with us for another week, a very much a celebration week, a celebratory week, I should say, celebrating the milestone of Tom Hawkins' game number three hundred and fifty. In any time we can knock off the Hawks, I think it's a wonderful time to celebrate. I am joined as I am every single week by Meg McDonald. Meg, great to see you. Great to see you too, Lingy. A great Easter Monday. Happy Easter. Yeah. Did you have a good weekend. Thank you. I did. Yeah, I had a lovely weekend. It was very nice. Watched some footy. Worked at some footy, and then got to top it off by just sitting on the couch. I didn't go up there, uh, but sat on the couch and cheered the cats on and endured a nice long break which would have seemed mm-hmm. like a hell of a lot longer if I'd or anyone was at the MCG um I just went and got a few things done and then I could come back and finish cheering the cats on over the hawks um we're going to talk all things about that game but let's go straight to that <laughs> a was it a 44 minute delay something like that 44, 41 41, 41 minute delay I wrote 41 on the run sheet but Six, that was somewhat of a guess. Six eleven pm was the restart time. Um, you were there. You were I at was the there ground. And actually, the the initial announcement was six oh six, and then the groan when thirty seconds later they adjusted it was was huge. I mean, the weather for how bad the weather was. I had great trip up on the train. I roped in Georgie Rankin to go. Um, don't know if my teammate Becky Webb still listens to the pod, but I thought I was going with her. Text her about tickets and then she goes, oh, no, sorry, I sorted mine yesterday. Oh. And Nina Morrison wow. helped me out. So wow. anyway, I was um, – had a sp- spent a great day with um, with G Rankin uh, and we were on level one undercover. So it was, it was oh. fantastic. Perfect. Um, and it was my first Cats game for the year. So the atmosphere and the feel pre-game and – I turned to her and I said, can you, I mean, you've done it. I, I couldn't imagine what it would feel like to have that MCG buzz of the of the pregame warm-up. And then, yeah, all, all was good and well until so <laughs> three-quarter time. <laughs> My goodness. It, it, it's a strange one, um, even just seeing a couple of the players as they've come mm. through to uh, start their recovery today, um, which saw Mark O'Connor, and he said, yep, definitely the weirdest game he's yeah. ever been a part of. Um that longer break, it wasn't just a five or ten minute, um, and you could keep yourself sort of warm. The players had to effectively cool down, yep. find something to entertain themselves, and then re warm up and be ready to take on a team that was always going to come at them yep. because they had nothing to lose being six goals down in a last quarter. Yeah, it was, I mean, so, and what I think we found bizarre was that the full three quarter time had happened and then it came, you know, right at the end. And I mean, we were in it, what were we, 36 points up the, at, you know, at that point, and you're thinking, oh, the last time this sun happened, this time something, th- how am I going? When oh the lights gosh. went off? I've had a long weekend and I'm absolutely <laughs> cooked. Um, uh, yes, whenever it was in the team, in the, the team, oh my gosh, Jakey, you're going to have to take this out. No, leave it in, leave no, it in. I will definitely be keeping <laughs> this one. Because <laughs> um, when I stuff you know up massively multiple say. times, I'll be able to recall <laughs> this moment. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, the team that was down <laughs> came home strong. <laughs> And it looks like they that did. at the start. It looked like that at the start of the break. Um, but I heard the boys, you know, they went down, had some Makona and chilled out. It was showed a very professional approach. It, yeah, it showed the professionalism of the group mm. and probably the maturity of the group. And, and yeah, hearing Tom Hawkins say mm. that him and Jez just said, oh, I know what we're going to need just to go and sneak yeah. into the little coffee room and just relax. That's, that's players who've played a lot of footy and realizing yeah. you can't stay up for this yeah. entire almost. Um, w- there was there wasn't a set time they were going to Mm-mm. come back when the break was first called, so you had to just relax with it. Um, the game, Meg, it was it was a f- a funny game because, yeah. as you said, it's Geelong Hawthorne. It's a big crowd. It's Easter Monday. It has that feeling. Going into the game, the the neutrals out there would say, "Oh well, Geelong's clearly a, a mm-hmm. better team right now, playing better than Hawthorne. They should win." But I think Geelong and Hawthorne supporters both know better than to say that because yeah. anything can happen in these games. The Cats got off to an absolute flyer and it just looked like, here we go, beauty. This is going to be here we go. Pre- here we go, premiership, great. <laughs> 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 um, no, it was it was a fantastic start, wasn't it? And I'm sure we'll go through individual players. But, I mean, to start with first CV, Toby Conway, just straight yeah. out of like, great, wasn't that first hit out. He was excellent all game against oh. a big guy. Lloyd Meeks, a, a monster of a guy. And he showed really good signs. Yeah, I think, I don't know how closely, you know, I'm, I'm sure Cats fans have been excited about Toby for a long time. And I know the club takes an approach where, you know, they want to, as we've spoken about all last year, 
set players up for success when they eventually do, you know, have their have their first crack at it. I know this was his second career game, but everyone around the club is so I mean, in the vein of Tom Hawkins, like we were speaking about last week, and I know we said the same about Ollie Dempsey. He is a really beautiful person and um everyone's favourite is Toby and you watch him in the VFL and he's um yeah, that the rut craft stuff, of course he's huge, but um, his defensive intent and yeah. his presence down back and his chasing. And at one point in the fourth quarter, I'm like, Toby's on the spread. He's getting the ball out in the wing. Uh, so there's there's so much to be excited about and ki- to kick a snag as well. Very nice. I think when you – players like Toby and, and there's other ones that have seen the, throughout the year. Mm. Zach Guthrie's another one. I, I thought mm. I thought had another couple of amazing moments um, where he just yep. body-lined the ball superbly. He's one who took – a little bit longer. He's now an absolute established um, quality player in that team, an integral part of that team. Um, when I think within the club, mm-hmm. you can see them putting the work in and you can see the attributes and understanding that in game number one, game number 15, in game number 35, there's still going to be inconsistencies and there's still going to be maturing of body to come, mm-hmm. but you can see the work going in. That's where I think club people have that trust of, this is worth pursuing because in time they build a body, they build a fitness yeah. base, they build an understanding of the game. They're going to become a quality player for us. Yeah, that's so well said. I almost went the other way with with having to remind myself that it was just game two because, because I've been privileged to see all that work and to have watched Toby as he's played at different levels. You think, oh, this is, this is great. I'm, we're going to have a, you know, a, a full-time elite Premier Ruckman no, hang on, it's just game two. And to do what he did in game two was really, really wonderful. And you're right. And, and I think the messaging's been really clear throughout. I mean, a lot of people want to know about the you know, succession. When is Reese going to play? When's Toby going to play? But I think the um, – I'm trying to not use the word culture. <laughs> but the the um, intent by both of them is to – you know, is to share the load and to help each other be better and that's been clear so far. It's really worked well. And another player probably fits into exactly what we're talking about who I thought was just superb. All mm. game, but in particular the first quarter was Tanner Bruin. Oh, um, my goodness. I think it was at 15 touches in the first quarter. Ends up with 27 disposals, 15 of those contested, nine clearances and five tackles. Big thank you to a certain other person on this podcast who provided oh, that's these, okay. uh, the thanks preparation to AFL.com. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Meg. You are much better prepared than me every single week. Um, you know another player who I reckon stepped up massively in the mm-hmm. last two weeks has been Brandon Parfitt. Oh, yeah. I think 21 touches, 10 tackles again, again on the back of 10 from last week. He, I don't know, he's always been hard and tough in the yeah. contest, but he's getting across the ground really well. I totally agree. Yeah, he clearly sort of you know knows and embraces his role in the team and I think he had a bunch of score involvements as well. And I've loved listening to Scotty. I, I, he sounds like he's, he's, he loves Parf as a player and he'd love him in every week and, and as you said yesterday, he's just so pumped that he's, um, you know, the opportunity's come up for him to be back in the team and as we always say, his preparedness to make the most of that's been really great. A part of that evolving midfield that we've mm. been we've been talking about. So hopefully that form continues. Uh, Going to be tested this week against a very good Western Bulldogs midfield. So hopefully past yeah. form continues. Okay. But Tanner's someone who we saw high draft pick, Glimpses at the Giants, mm. comes to the Cats. Last year, we we looked at him. I think he was in the team, then out of the team in the in the first handful of rounds. And then you and I spoke um, on the podcast, the Adelaide game down here yes. from memory where he had a monster last quarter. Yeah. It was signs. Oh, yeah, okay, Tanner Bruin. And then throughout the year, he had some really good games. He had some quieter games. And you think, oh, hang on, hang on. Mm. But that's, that's the natural inconsistency of youth. Then another preseason mm-hmm. and another building of his body and, and, and education of the game, he plays a game like he did yesterday and was just integral to them getting a win. It was, he was unbelievable. I was taking notes at quarter time, the notes section on my phone being like, no, podcast notes for tomorrow. <laughs> ah, good and then I went back this morning and I looked at them and I would said something like, <laughs> it was like, Tanner, Ollie, Toby, and I – Tanner, and then I'd, I'd, accident, I'd accidentally written his name twice because he was just. I remember there was one you because know, he was everywhere. He was everywhere, and um, another teammate shout out Becky Webb. She was messaging messaging me saying, 
Tanner is Tanner is elite. And I looked at him and I thought, I wonder if I mean the outside noise and all that, but I think the the commentary around our team at the moment is that our forward line, you know, our bookends are so strong. Mm. Um, but perhaps we've got a midfield that is going to be up against it against the top teams, particularly with, you know, Guthrie and, and Danger missing at the moment. And Tanner's gone, I'm not having that. Um, you know, I'm ready to level up and we'll see, you know, how much consistency he can bring with it this year. But it was it was a great sign yesterday, particularly when you've missed you've missed through injury the week before to respond um, on a wet day, a hard day, and play some really hard footy. And against an opposition who, yes, in their stage of their development, might be slightly behind, but one part of the ground that they are very, very good at is the midfield. Um, Joy Newcomb um, being excellent. Warple was terrific yesterday yeah, for the Hawks. Um, Mackenzie. All the, there's quality in that midfield, and you know mm-hmm. they're going to be hard and tough. That yeah. is one certainty with that midfield. So for Tanner to step up in that area. And then we see little glimpses too. I also quickly want to say Mark Blitzar is just oh, crucial to I the I thought you were going to say him before, yeah. Yeah, to the way that that midfield works and the way the team works. But then we're seeing Jai Clark, yeah. you know, take a, take a real 50-50 ball and it might not even be amazing game-breaking stuff, but it's so crucial to what everybody else is doing. And then Max Holmes is that run mm. and carry off halfback sometimes, midfield sometimes. Um, the creativity of the experienced head of Mitch Duncan. Yeah. That, it, it's a complementary group where you've got some experience and some of that youth starting to come through, which is which is really exciting. And they do get the ball into a forward line, Ooh, yeah. which, which is a very good forward line. That The 350 gamer, the milestone man, kicks four. Jez gave him a little present at the end Jez there. Jez gave him a little. And he, and he said that, you know, obviously Mitch Duncan's given, given him a number over the years and gave him that first one. But I was sitting sort of on that wing flank area where that where that happened and I thought, I mean, that kick is, that kick is elite. Yeah. And, you know, he's kicking before he's leading. They're so in tune with each other. But if I was, if, if I was a defensive coach against the Cats, I would just, I would just put someone 45 metres out in that, pocket flank area and say you just stand there because Hawkins is going to lead somewhere there <laughs> so you just stand there but the cool complimentary thing of that is and what Hawkins demands if that happens there'll be space somewhere else and that's where yeah. Jez and Ollie and Ollie Henry very good kicking four goals that's why having that multi-pronged forward line is is so good even Ollie Dempsey again not mm-hmm. having a monster game or anything like that but had moments of crucial the ball is the ball is there and just needs to be won or halved. Um, and he stepped up and did it. Tyson Stengel, I thought, was superb. Oh, wasn't he? Yes, that, the little knock-ons or the beautiful ball use when the, the the heat's on the footy and the slippery conditions. He just looked super sharp. But yeah, he, he certainly was. Uh, shout out to those, you know, small forwards up onto the wing sometimes. Obviously, we, we note how um, flexible the team is. And, you know, you can, you can talk about Ollie and I'm going, am I talking about him on the wing or as a high half forward, but there was one goal that I think Hawthorne did kick the goal in the end, but the pressure coming at them as they were trying to make it happen 15 metres out from goal was coming from, I think it was Grian, Close, Stengel, Dempsey. Um, I think the backs had been caught up the wing and it had gone out the back and I, I think the even contribution we're talking about is probably the most exciting thing because when you're having success, it's... It's, it's not off the back of three players when you're having the ultimate mm. success. So um, equally, I think uh, there were a number of times where being at the ground, you could see that Hawthorne would look up and have nothing to kick to because the defence is yeah. really well set. Yep. Jack Henry showed how important. Oh, my gosh. Him missing last year or yeah. chunks of last year, how important it is to have him back there settled. And I think so many spe- people speak about, you know, obviously we, we celebrate Stewie and, and I, I would know that that – press decision that um, stopped the goal from... Luke Bruce. Luke Bruce. That one, yep. Uh, he... I remember getting coached that by him and how ha- to delay and when to delay and force the decision-making. Um, that was amazing. But if someone goes to him, they're quite... And we're still holding six and, you know, an opposition forward's gone up to the stoppage, then Jack Henry's free. And they, a- any one of them is prepared to, to play that spare role and um, it's, it's really great to watch live. Certainly is a terrific win. Let's give some love before we uh, get to some VFL, VFLW. We're going to talk about next week's game, Gather Round, against the Dogs um, coming up in the second break. But 
A lot of love to the man who played 350 yeah. games, Tom Hawkins. Um, his, he became – sorry, let me get this right. He's moved past Jack Rewalt into 13th mm-hmm. position for most ever career goals, now up to 790. He's equaled Jack Rewald and Damien Hardwick for player-coach combo with 289. So that's with Chris Scott. God. Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Sorry, we um, need you need a coach in there for that to, for that <laughs> yes, to work. You do. Sorry. You do. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's. It also was his three hundredth game of kicking one plus goals, which mm. is fifth all time. Kevin Bartlett has the most with three hundred twenty nine. Just stat after stat after stat, mm-hmm. record uh, after record of just an incredible high quality in one of the most difficult positions on the field. Mm. Um, and it's. I'm, I'm glad you brought up that goal that he kicked in the first quarter, the set shot. And and Brian Taylor was on the commentary, and, and BT's big on this, is that dedication to the craft of set shot goal kicking. Mm-hmm. He was just raving about Tom Hawkins' understanding of his own kick, that it, it kind of almost bends opposite to the way yeah. that a normal kick does. It usually goes right to left if you're a right footer. It goes slightly the other way, but only a little bit. And you can see he has just honed it with years of practice on the training track, understands his kick. When you see him kick his set shots and you see that craft of when to hold his opponent, then lead. When Even the one where there was the kick was to his advantage and he kept his opponent under the ball and took that much. All of that forward craft is just so elite. He makes it look easy. Yeah. It is very, very difficult, everything yeah. that he is doing. I incredibly so and I was watching Stewie on um, he was on on the couch immediately after the game and he was asked what Hawk had what Hawk had taught him and I know we spoke about it last week but that's the dedication to training and just what training does for you and how that allows you to get better over time and you know there aren't we say it every almost every week there aren't any shortcuts he's just done he's just banked so many hours and so much dedication and clearly he loves it and you, and you reap the rewards. And I think that's that's probably rubbing off on the rest of the team. We've been incredibly accurate this season. Um, and I think, obviously, Jeremy Cameron has an amazing command of the football as well. But you've got Grind doing it. Yeah, I mean, they're all... They're all, they're all yeah. Um, give you a real sense of confidence when the ball goes forward. The only question I have um, around training and preparation and understanding yeah. the capabilities of one's game is mm. the decision-making around the chairing off. Of oh no. Tom Hawkins. <laughs> so now I understand the great mates are usually the ones who get to do it. So it's Jez and Mitch yeah. Duncan. But when you're trying to haul up a man as big as Tom Hawkins, yeah. there has to be some sort of understanding of um, equal height or like maybe yeah. get a third person involved. It's so funny that you say that. So I happen to be seated just by chance next to Kev Dickerson. Oh yes, yep. former media manager at the club for a long, long time. Yeah, so him and um, him and uh, his daughter Rosie, I believe. Uh, and during the break, there was a lot of crowd interaction. I didn't say this during the lightning break. Oh yes, but I don't know if it was on the coverage, but there was a, there were a few, quite a few pitch invaders. A few fines a going their of, way. Um, bit of entertaining. Someone tried to kick a goal, I think, didn't they? They, they did. Yeah. Um, had a had a couple of people come up and have a chat about the podcast. So oh I'm yeah. sure they give you feedback on a, a great. You do a lot of media, whereas I just get I just get podcast feedback. <laughs> and I'm, I'm I'm on a tangent here, but I'd like to just make it clear to everyone that one particular gentleman thought that when I said I was going for my first run last week, I'd I'd been sitting on the couch oh. since the end of the season. <laughs> doing absolutely doing nothing. Doing absolutely nothing. He goes, you need to train a bit harder. I said, okay. Uh, he was very nice about the, about the podcast. But um, I have been training, just not yeah. running. Anyway, um, Kev and I started a, uh, a really long discussion about – he was like, no, the chairing off is going to be – it's going to be Jeremy and Mitch Duncan. I'm sure that's who we'll go to and it's just not going to work. No, no. And Kev left before the chairing off. I stay. We stayed during our – shout out to Dougal Morrison. We stayed during the lightning issue um, because I said I can't come on the podcast tomorrow and say that I that I left. Then I find you didn't even come to the game. No. no, no. <laughs> anyway, that's me on a um, soliloquy. But <laughs> I, uh, I stayed throughout, had a great interaction with the crowd and we were concerned that this was going to happen with the chair off. Um, and it did they made it work? I thought Blitz would step in, but yeah, I thought you Blitz sort of had was there to have as a Mitch spotter. Duncan. 
Yeah, Mitch and Tom are such great mates. So, but I, it, because he was the shorter one of the two with Jeremy Cameron, it felt like all the weight then landed on yeah. Mitch, which was a lot to take. Yeah. Um, I'm glad Blitz was there ready to spot if needed, but they managed. They, they got managed. there. I know it's, uh, and I also I know it's culturally different with men and women. The sheer amount of talk about Tom Hawkins' size throughout the last <laughs> week, <laughs> I'm like, the man's doing well. He's taking his stride. He's like, yeah, I'm a massive unit, yeah. and I. <laughs> It makes my achievement all the more impressive. It certainly does. No, we love them. 350 games and I reckon in about five, six, seven weeks, mm. whatever it might be, time, we're going to be talking again about Tom Hawkins because yeah, yeah. Uh, he's closing in on that game's record and his incredible mate, Joel. Is he kicking his 800th in the record-breaking oh, game? Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Oh. Uh, it would be nice to do it actually, before that. Actually, it's yeah, five we, games away. We want a few more goals <laughs> yeah, before Yeah, I know. That. I thought that would be nice. I was like, no, no. You know, okay, kick, kick, you. kick your 800th first, Hawkey, and then you can um, have the celebration right. after that. Um, we'll take a break. I want to talk VFL and VFLW up after the break because then I want to look ahead to gather round the yep. dogs and the cats on Saturday night in Adelaide and the Festival of Footy or whatever they're yeah. calling it, the, the wonderful gather round. We'll talk about that next. Welcome back. It is great to have you with us on to the final bell. We are going to look forward now, Meg, Mm -hmm. to next week's game and gather round. Before we do, though, um, and it might play into this as we start discussing who may or may not come into Mm -hmm. the team, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. after a win like that, maybe there won't be many changes. Uh, The VFL, unfortunately, went down to Box Hill on the weekend here at GMHBA Stadium. Box Hill, 111 to the Cats, 77. And in the VFLW... Now, this score's not a pretty score, but mm. maybe a reason for it. Uh, Box Hill in the VFLW, 98 to the Cats. Only the two behind, so a 96-point win to Box Hill. But am I right in saying I think there was around 12 AFLW players in the Box Hill VFLW team? That's I think that's right, Lingin, and you don't want to... Don't want to make excuses, but that is, uh, you know, a fair disparity in But it the makes experience. it difficult, doesn't it? It does make it really difficult, and I was... I, I think they were within... Um, it was a it was a competitive game. There were ch- opportunities to score, um, and I was watching into the third quarter, and and you know it was more evenly matched than that. You know, than that's reflective of they, as you can see, they kicked seven goals in the, in the last, last quarter. quarter yeah. So it was a bit of a blowout at the end there, which probably speaks to the um, um, athleticism of those AFRW players. But it's always a good opportunity to test yourself against the best, and I think there'll be a fair few. Um, fluctuations in results in the VFW this year. Yeah, because you, as you explained to me last week, which I didn't know, there's no restriction. I don't believe there's any restriction on how many AFW players play, which in one sense, let's let's get everyone together, let's develop together. Um, but it but it will change things as our as our AFW training ramps up and, and players choose to sort of, you know, prioritize that over mm-hmm. VFL and how different clubs use VFL as a tool for development. Um Having said that, it's a competition in its own right. So It is. We may see a couple of lopsided results, unfortunately, because of that. So the VFLW this week play Saturday, 11am at Trevor Barker Oval against the Southern Saints. For those of you who want to make the trek and go along and, and cheer on the team, um, Trevor Barker Oval, 11am. The VFL, there's no game on for the Cats. Instead, it's the state rep game. Mm-hmm. The VFL taking on the Sandful. Um, we've got one player in that initial squad. It hasn't been finalised yet. Bailey van der Heuvel. I believe so, and I think it was getting explained to me that that squad was nominated before uh, any rounds of AFL were played, so they might make some changes having having looked at you know who's performed. Okay, let's hope the VFL knock off the sample. That's, uh, yeah. That state battle is still Get always going to be there. Yeah, absolutely, the big V. Um, speaking of... Sandful and Adelaide, mm-hmm. the entire footy world moves to uh, Adelaide and a churches, little bit. Yep. Yes, it feels like it heads to South Australia. The second iteration of Gather Round kicks off Thursday. See, that's only two days away. I that's know. crazy. <laughs> that's going to come around very quickly. The Cats take on the Bulldogs on Saturday night at the Adelaide Oval. Um, in what is shaping up as a huge clash. Obviously, the Cats in really good form, but so are the Dogs. Yeah, they've had some really big scores in recent weeks, right? Over 100 points, last two. big Yeah, the crushed the Eagles, kept them to 30 points. Um, we know that there's quality everywhere for the Western Bulldogs, so it will shape up as a, a really big game. Um, on 
what is a really fun weekend and, and some of the games go to Norwood Oval, some of them go to Adelaide Hills. Um, I think a, a bit of a Geelong supporter group uh, might be heading yeah. over and going for lunch at Penfolds um, over there, oh, really? the estate, and then heading to the game afterwards. Oh my, well, I shall take this up with the corporate team upstairs <laughs> and get, I'll try and get a gig. It's all about add-on experiences for some of the oh, fans. How fun, that's great. I'm sure. Are you a, are you a, are you a wine lover? Uh I, I'm a clueless wine person, mm. but if somebody who Partake. understands it says, here, try this, I say, oh, that's delicious. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't tell you what it, what it is that's or okay. was or the reasons. I it think just there are some wineries in South Australia. That's all. Yep. I'll it's be able to test a couple of those out. I'm looking forward to getting over there. I'm uh, working at a couple of games, but also going to enjoy um, what South Australia and Adelaide has to offer. Yeah. Are you working the Cats game? I am um, part of this function group oh, that is heading there, so I can Great. I can relax. You work a in the room, bit. yeah. You work in the room. <laughs> that will be a lot of fun, a lot of fun, and um, and hopefully the cats can have another win. Meg, I want five changes going to the Hawks game, mm. uh, which seemed a lot, but then when you break down why and and who was to come back and and everything like that, it, it made a lot of sense. Uh, Paddy Dangerfield, we can just still assume he's still. Yep couple of weeks away maybe one maybe two whatever it might be um are we expecting many other changes i haven't got the latest it having you know it's, it's tuesday morning everyone straight after the game yeah yes. straight after the game well, so I, I'm I wonder though with the quicker turnaround playing a monday game to a saturday night game there may be some management of players yeah i believe um scotty said in his press conference last week that you know Fans shouldn't read necessarily too much into who the ins and outs, considering that, you know, the, the club plans for a five-day turnaround and management of plays across the course of the season. So I don't know what that means for, you know, Zach Tui, Stanley, um, you know. Tom we, Atkins subbed out at three-quarter time, which was part of his management and yeah. probably a really good opportunity and worked out perfectly <laughs> Given the delay, and then they asked it for him to. Yeah, his participation in the warm up was, um, I think, reassuring for everyone on the ground. Everyone got a bit stressed, and um, no, he was he was totally fine. So we we hope that he he will be available to go. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do mm. with Reese and Toby. Um, is it just a one off for Toby? Could they both go together? Who knows? Um, yeah. Reese is obviously so athletic. There wouldn't oh be gosh. a question with him going around with Tim English. Yeah. Um, Toby played against Tim English uh, final round last year. That's right, think yes, went, good went memory. Well. Yeah, no, that's a good call. So there is that sort of balance. What, what do you do with those mm. two? Can you play them both? Do you play them both? Um, and with the short turnaround, um, do you manage anyone? Uh, I, I would imagine at some point in time a it's just natural for a young player, let's say an Ollie Dempsey or a Jai Clark, mm. they will play a block of games and are playing really good footy. But then the smart thing is to bring them out for one week. Yeah. Um, now, and totally rest them. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I would think so. Yeah. Because so many people say, well, hang on, the young players, they should just be able to play every week. Mm. You know, it's the older guys who need the management. It, it's different when you're in your first run of genuine senior footy. Mm -hmm. When you're playing, you want to play every week, by the yeah. way, because you just want to hold on to your spot in the team. But it is such a huge step for your body to play and recover and still be at its peak the first time when you're playing in your first, I reckon even your first 30 games, yep. um, maybe even 40, where five or six weeks can feel like an entire season oh, sometimes sure the first time you're doing it. for a bye. Yeah, yeah. So, so you never want to give up your spot. You will always try and convince the coaches and the fitness, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm flying. But they would monitor them really closely and if they see a little dip in their recovery and their, yeah. their physical performance on the track and with the testing they do, it's smart to then bring them out for a week so that you said it, you used the term before, set up to succeed. Yeah. So the next time they play, they're fresh and can cover the ground really well. Yeah, there's an incredible amount of testing, isn't there? I think as a player, you can feel like you're right to go. And sometimes, I know, I know people think we go too much by the numbers and the data, but you know, they're, they're, it's there for a reason and it can be quite indicative of, obviously, of how you're going. My question to you on what we were just saying is, is for someone like Toby, do you then, is it important to get a block in or is it a, is it a one at a time situation or are you, are you trying to, mm. okay, see how you go over a month for the continuity for your body's response? I would love, I would love to get a block in. I've, that's always been a believer. I love the fact that Jai Clark played early and is now 
in either in a block or yeah. you know hopefully more of a block mm-hmm. to come i would love that for toby it's not necessarily perfectly realistic when we're talking about effectively one position on yes, in the whole yes. team and jai can be part of a midfield group yeah. toby it's the ruck spot yeah so and reese has done absolutely nothing wrong in no. fact he's done a lot of things right to still hold that position when he wants to come back into the team so how they get Toby as many games as possible over the course of this season, setting him up for more games next year and then eventually um, take it where he's playing 22 games a season and, and away he goes. That, that's where I love the longer-term view of mm-hmm. this club and their development is we're not just going to think of Toby here and now, got to play him because the fans want to see our young Ruckman play and we're going to just throw him out there for 23 games straight. Yeah. It's about Toby being a ruckman at this club for the next 12 years and him having a peak that is as high as it can possibly be. And when we need him to go and stand up in a grand final against yeah. the very best ruckman in the competition, mm-hmm. he'll be ready to do be that. Ready to do that. No, e- exactly right. No, but I think the reality is that for, for players at both ends of their career, missing is, is no, like it's not fun. So I think you are still asking a lot of. Well, I don't. I speak for myself. We don't play nearly as many games, and to get managed, yeah, and you know, it's 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 hard to swallow at times. Even though you know it's for the greater good, even though you know it's to to maximise your potential later in the season and and to extend your longevity or or to accelerate your development. But I think it's it's asking a fair bit of of the players in the team, and then and therefore it says a lot of how the team is gelling and feeling and 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 working together for the greater good that that happens so smoothly i don't think it's um an an easy thing or or a given it's not a given that it just that it just works well i think time and planning and trust goes into it uh, your point's a good one and and what i'm if i'm a coach and i'm informing a player they've been managed Mm -hmm. the reaction i want to see Mm -hmm. is one of clear-headed understanding and listening to why with a deep burning yeah. ang- anger and disappointment <laughs> that you've been left out. And if you yeah. could have that reaction just straight away right in front of me, that would be, <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> you want the players to play, absolutely, but, um, but it is about looking towards the entire season yeah. um, and, and in some cases their entire career as well. Um, no questions this week for us, Meg given the Easter break and mm-hmm. everything like that. Um, we don't have any questions, uh, but anyone who does want to send in questions, please flick them through, keep How them coming to us. How much chocolate did you eat? Too much, oh, too much. Okay. I went in with, yeah, hot cross buns. Yeah. How many? I hadn't bought any until Saturday. Oh, okay, but no, good. don't start. And then and I started. So I think my total for Easter is only four. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. No, no, yeah, no. yeah. F- not four loaves, four like packs. Four over Actual six packs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. No, no much individual. better. Yeah, you're fine. I'm. I'm fine. I'm talking in like packs for me. No. Yeah. Well. Over the course of entire weekend, so I've I've got some work to do. In fact, it's okay. If you do feel like a run later on, I'm probably needed yeah. to come with you. Yeah. Well. Listeners, that's where you need to direct your feedback. <laughs> yes. Send as much as you like towards <laughs> me and send questions as well, please. We will get to them next week. Uh, we'll be back next week, Meg, uh, mm-hmm. after what will be a huge gather round game. Saturday night, Cats taking on the Bulldogs. Now, this is at 8 10 pm. Yeah. That's 8 10 Adelaide time. Or is that? I've gone with, <laughs> in writing out, I've gone with local time because I think the app. Local time to us. Sorry, oh, local time to us. Okay, beautiful. Geelong, Geelong time. Geelong time. Eight ten p.m. at the Adelaide Oval against a very good Western Bulldogs team. So this will be a uh, a big game. Um, before I think is it North Melbourne after that we it's North Melbourne here, here on a Sunday. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So a couple of big games for the Cats. Um, if you want to know anything about any of the injury updates, jump on the website. The health update will be there probably in the next couple of days. Given it is everyone's. Turning around quick this week. Yeah, so immediate after the game. But um, great to chat with you, Meg. You too, Lingy. I'm glad that you got through that uh, lightning delay and the rain delay and everything like that. And enjoyed a got the win cup and of Makona and relaxed. Came home. <laughs> my ha- my mum was here because I moved house on the weekend and uh, got home and my housemate and they were enjoying a faux together, a fur. 
No, I'm, I was starving. <laughs> None for me. But had had mum done all the work, unpacked everything? Oh, uh, yeah, she's been unbelievable. Oh, she has been unbelievable. Spoiled Shout rotten. Shout out, she's currently at my old place <laughs> cleaning my room, I think. Oh, gosh. Wow. Yes, I am 32 years old. That's okay. That's okay. Um, we will be back next week. Thank you for listening. Uh, go Cats. Enjoy Gather Rounds.